Hi everyone, this is Rob with the UMass Architecture and Design Digital Fabrication Lab. And today we're going to talk quickly about the new Neon plugin for Rhino. So Neon is a rendered viewport in the native Rhino environment. And um, it's available for download from the McNeil website. It's also on all of the labs, um, on all of the computers in all the labs on campus that have Rhino. So uh, the way that Neon works is it's a ray tracer, and so that means that it's it's calculating light bounces and uh, applying a more distributed lighting scheme to your model. Um, so that works a lot better than the native Rhino, uh, Rhino rendered viewport, which I can show you really quickly, it has some issues with shading and so on and so forth. It does give an idea of volumes, but it's not a very good output. So in general, um, you know, it's not really appropriate for presentation type work, but with the new Neon plugin you actually can produce presentation quality materials very quickly. And um, it's also a good way to do sort of a quick test render to see how your final render is going to look. Um, so it's uh, mostly used for exteriors and uh, that's because it doesn't have a light sensing option uh, based on the camera location. Uh, so it's just using the entire environment lighting and providing an even lighting across your entire scene. Uh, but that means that interiors can be a little bit more tricky. They tend to come out really dark. So you can actually do it using lights, but we're not going to go into that here. But you can, uh, you can, it can be done. Okay, so this is a basic model. It has no materials. And I'm going to turn on the neon rendered viewport um, by going up onto my drop-down menu up here. And now you'll see there's this new option, Ray Traced with Neon. I'm going to click on that, and the neon viewport will load, and it takes a minute here. Then you can see it's um, it's producing a rendered view of my model. And so the nice thing about neon is, as I rotate around, as you can see, the view is automatically updated, and the rendering automatically restarts um, as soon as you get to a new settled view. So the nice thing uh, about that is that you can actually move quite quickly uh, through a rendered space, find a, find a view that you like, um, and come up with a very quick render. So uh, it works fairly well and it's fairly quick in a small model. With other models it can um, be a lot slower, so it may be more advantageous to find a view uh, not using neon and just use a regular ghosted or shaded viewport. Uh, find your view and then set your viewport to neon. Um, so uh, there's a few different uh, menu items here. So this one down here is these increasing numbers. So it's that's the number of uh, ray tracing passes that the computer has done so far. So it's basically the resolution of your image. So right now I'm on 18, 17, 18 of 256. So you can see it'll get to be quite a fine resolution and uh, you'll notice that these numbers start to speed up over time. Um, so you can get a quite high quality uh, image pretty, pretty quickly and if, you wait, if you're willing to wait a while you can get quite a nice image. Over here you can see there's this timer. That's how long the rendering has been going from this particular view. Uh, so we're almost up to a minute here. And then as soon as I move my view you can see that the, the count and time restarts as does the count over here. There are a few different options down here. You can lock the view, um, so that'll make it so that it won't, uh, you aren't able to change views so that the, the rendering will still continue, so you don't uh, accidentally move things and uh, result in, uh, you know, a, a restarted uh, rendering. So, and alternately you can also press this pause button and that'll stop the count. And uh, so you may want to do that if uh, you need to do something else that's memory intensive and you just want to pause Neon. And then you press it again and it'll keep going. Um, okay, so uh, a few other things. If I have to unlock this view here. Okay, so um, uh, Neon takes, t takes materials quite well. So in this uh, in this structure here I have a few glass faces in the front here so I'm going to set those I have them on this layer uh, so I'm going to set the material for that layer to a glass and I already have some built-in glass layers uh, glass materials but uh, you might have to make one yourself that's okay uh, it's a fairly simple operation won't cover that now uh, click OK and you'll see as soon as I apply the material Neon immediately updates and starts the render over with those new transparent and slightly tinted uh, shades there. 
Okay, so I can apply a couple other materials. Maybe my exterior walls here um, are more of a white color. So I can do a white mat. Okay. And uh, I can also change my interior uh, walls, change that interior wall color to a darker color, maybe a, kind of a darker gray. Okay. And uh, so you'll see it's a pretty quick process here. And, um, and so now you can really set up your view exactly how you want it. Okay, so maybe I want some a view kind of something like this, a little bit of perspective. I can change my lens length over here. Um, it's looking pretty good. I think I'll take that one. Okay, so now I need to um, export this. So it's not a renderer, right? So you can't actually uh, you can't actually render anything, um, but it's it's a rendered viewport. So what we're going to do is capture our viewport and export that as an image and uh, then you can process that just like any other image and you have a few different options there that we'll go through okay so a few, a few things that you may want to pay attention to so there's this world XYZ axis down here this will appear in your image so you may want to get rid of that so there's a few different options that we're going to go through quickly so if I type options I'll bring up my options menu okay up here under grid I'm going to go ahead and turn off this uh, radio button here that says show world axes icon and that'll make that little axis uh, disappear. Then I can come down here and under view, which will be the bottom, it'll look like this, so yeah, uh, under view and under display modes here, display modes, uh, you're going to click on ray traced with neon. And there's a few different options in here, I'm not going to go through them right now, but you can change a few different things including the background, a few different options there. And if you go deeper into that menu, you can actually turn on shadows and uh, the grid and just do a few other uh, things if you want to. Um, you can also turn on the edges, so it'll render those those edges uh, and your wireframes. Okay, um, but typically this is looking pretty good, um, and in general, I find that the the default settings are, are pretty effective for everyday renders. Uh, so this works quite well just for doing a clay a clay rendering, you know, just a quick uh, sort of spatial analysis. You can understand a space and how light might sort of fall into the space. Okay, so um, so there's a few other things. Uh, oh, and just quickly, uh, it does work quite well with light. So if I were to uh, go into Render Tools and uh, turn on my sun here, you'll notice that it'll immediately uh, start to update here. And uh, now I've got a sun, and like I said, it automatically updates. So as I change the angle of the sun here, I'm going to get different uh, different shading patterns. So. Maybe I want something like this, and uh, you can also turn on the skylight, and uh, you can have some skylight options as well. Uh, and under lights, you can change the tone of different things. So right now, I've got a little bit of a tan color to my sun, uh, but you can change that and and, uh, and get different results. Okay, so now how to uh, export a viewport? Okay, so um, so right now this is loading and I'm on step six here right so this is a fairly low resolution image however I can increase it um, just by waiting so maybe we'll just wait until it gets up to ten here so we're on eight nine and so, you know this is still a quite a grainy image but it's gonna it'll be fine for now so the command to export a uh, view is you are gonna go up there and and you may often want to just go ahead and lock your view here and um, oops, don't want to have anything selected or you'll get those yellow ISO curves. Okay, so the command to, um, to capture your view is view, capture, and you have two options. One is to clipboard, so then if you go into, a, into another uh, program and do control V then paste it, you can uh, paste your image into, uh, into another document. But typically you want to save it as a file. So you go to view capture to file and click. So now we're all the way up to 20, so that's great. Uh, I've got a better resolution image. I'm just going to throw it on my desktop here. And I have a few different options. You can save it as any of these file types. And PNG has the nice and convenient option of having a transparent background. And so I'm going to just do a sample neon render and save it to my desktop. 
Okay, now if I go to my desktop here, um, I can find that image, sample neon render, and you can see it's a, it's a ooh. Well, generally it's a fully rendered image. It's probably going to be an issue with settings. So let's uh, let's try that one more time. If you capture the file, let's try without a transparent background and just see how it looks. So that's much better. That's working. Um, now there's uh, typically that's that's got to be an error in the program. Typically it works with a transparent background. However, I'm going to show you a quick workaround so you can get that transparent background really quickly. Okay, so um, back in our options menu, so I'm going to open up options again, and uh, under viewport settings, under ray trace for neon, uh, under viewport settings, you can just do transparent background. Click OK. Okay, now I've got a transparent background, and I'm going to again type view capture to file. And on my desktop, we'll do sample neon render 2, and uh, just do save. Now when I open that up on my desktop, sample neon render 2. Well, you know what, it might just be an issue with this release. Um, I'm not going to worry about it, but in general, um, you should be able to do that. But of course, with an image like this, you can just quickly select this color using Photoshop and uh, delete it, and then you can get a transparent background. Okay, uh, so that was Neon for Rhino. The re it's a rendered viewport plugin, and uh, again, it's available on McNeil's website, and it's in all the labs on campus uh, which have Rhino on the computers. Okay, this is Rob with the UMass Architecture and Design Digital Fabrication Lab.